We were talking about that. It's like, bro, I want to be hitting the gritty on my way to the point. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is, <laughs> but hitting the gritty. Just Google it. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, the show dedicated to talk about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. And I am <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Why? Bro, Factorio, man. It's Oh, on a scale of like zero to satisfactory, how sucked in are you? Well, so here's the bad part. Okay. Is that it's it's so much more like heroin than satisfactory because it feels good half the time and not good the other half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so it's like some some sick mixture of like satisfactory and Tarkov where half of the time you're playing it doesn't feel good, but the half that feels good feels so good you have to keep coming back. It's the Dark Souls Tarkov <laughs> of factory games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. sounds like there's a lot to unpack. I popped in the stream and there's like doom music happening and you're riding a tiny little dune buggy around a nest of alien creatures, freaking wiping them from the face of the earth. That's the vibe that I was got. My first, that was my first fight of this playthrough too. <laughs> this yeah, playthrough? Like... How many playthroughs have you done? Well, so... So... I... <laughs> on day one, I played for like three or four hours um and okay. oh, your cursor is right uh right above your nipple there mm, is that mine or yours yours um <laughs> the yeah so after like three or four hours basically well okay let me take a step back <laughs> i played the i played the tutorial okay and like i'm sure there are going to be people that are just going to say a skill issue and listen that's fine <laughs> You're all better than me at everything. Cool. I'm over it. I, I don't care. Um, I'm just going to share my experience. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's my podcast. Um, <laughs> so I played the tutorial and mm -hmm. it made me almost want to uninstall a game. Mm. Because they, so they walk you through a lot of the simple, they kind of put you in scenarios like sort of in media res, like okay. you already have stuff set up. Gotcha. And it's like, okay, do this thing. And it like, you know, guides you through yep. doing a thing, which is kind of like, you know, might be the second or third thing you do. Yeah. Um, and then it's like the fourth and fifth thing you do. But so the 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 aliens, the bugs, they call them biters. There's like biters and spitters. There's only the biters aliens. Yeah. Um in the tutorial, they are turned up to 11. Oh, interesting. So now keep in mind, to open up like your menu is like Q okay. or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, to, the controls are whack. Yeah. Once you get used to them, it's, they're fine, of course, right? Yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. just They're just so alien, pardon the pun, Yep. that... I'm sitting there and it's like, okay, I'm supposed to craft three fucking cog wheels. In order to get cog wheels, I need to have steel sheets. The yep. steel sheets you get from iron, iron sheets you get from iron ore that you put into a furnace. But like, you need to make sure that the little grabby arm, because like you have a furnace and then. I've seen the little. Grabbies little grabby that like arm. put them on the conveyor belts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are like you know entities, objects, assemblers, whatever. And then there's like conveyor belts, and then usually there's like some kind of grabby arm. There's different kinds, different yeah. speeds. They do different things. Um, and there's a million different ways of doing conveyor belts. It's a whole fucking. There's a whole science to it. But so I'm like trying to figure out all these things while like struggling. I keep trying to hit tab to open up my inventory. Yeah, naturally. that just opens up the mini map, you know. And then I'm getting attacked. So it's like I'm getting attacked. I'm I'm fucking having to run away. Guess what the shoot button is? If left click, space bar. Nope. Whoa, you would that's never crazy. be seven hundred <laughs> fucking years to figure that one out. You know, of course I'm, I'm too stubborn. Crazy. 
when I learn these games, I want to play as if I was just in my basement alone. For sure. Didn't have 100 people who were all pros. You know, because I want to... I want to have the experience that I would have yeah. otherwise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And not only that, but it also, like, keeps my experience much more... Um, not 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 down to earth, but like I'm relatable. I'm not, I don't get completely out of touch. Yeah, with yeah, it's relatable. The, the average gamer, right? Yeah, because if if too many streamers go about their careers basically living a life completely out of touch from yeah. normal gamers, right? Um, so I try to keep that in mind. I feel like there's also something about you remember what you learn more when you learn it that way as opposed to being like chat what's the button for this and it's like that and then like and a half hour later you might need that but that information is gone because you were just like chat what is it like you there's some subconscious thing where you know you can just rely on this entity for the information but if you like struggle through and figure it out and chat's like oh my god should i tell him it's just this but then you figure it out it's like that's locked in you like went through what everyone had to go through to get that information and you'll remember that you know yeah, and not only that, but, like, so many of the things, <laughs> they're effectively, like, puzzles to solve. Yeah. You know, like, I have these two belts. One of them has a lot going through it. Another one has a little. I want to even them out. How do you balance yeah, the belt? Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. How do you balance two? How do you balance four? How do you balance four into three? What about two into six? Right? Yeah. Like, and, and you can just, like, copy-paste a blueprint offline. Like, it's mm. trivial. It's... Um, this game is like super moddable. It's super like you can export the text. There's like a button to like export like a file for like a thing. And you can just like click and drag. Like it's super easy to share stuff. Interesting. Like, you can play like the whole game just clicking someone else's assembled yeah. shit. Yeah. And I'm sure some people enjoy the game. And if they do, that's fine. Right. Yeah, like I'm sure, not going to say sure. how to play. But for me, I want to solve. It's 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 like. <laughs> If I could go back in time before like math was invented and you know we were just like Neanderthals, could I have invented math, right? Like I want to be yeah. there with the the, yeah. the the like stone and the fucking chisel, right? And I want to do the thing that yeah. has already been done. Um yeah. I don't want to just be told what to do. I totally understand that. Yeah. So of course I'm not listening to any advice from chat. Um and I'm just struggling and the problem is, is that like you have to do these tasks. They're inherently some of them are like involved knowledge <clears> of <throat> things that you have to figure out. Some of them are just things that are a little bit confusing or weird because it's just very specific to this game. Yes. Yep. Um, okay. And so you have to memorize that, which involves doing it fifty times before it's like yeah, you know. Um. Because there's a hundred things you have to learn, and yeah, of course. So, and then all the while, I'm sitting there thinking, like, okay, if I want to rotate, I'm getting attacked by bugs. Yep. Okay, so so now I'm figuring out how to shoot. I'm out of ammo. How do I craft ammo? Oh, well, now you have. Rather than make the steel plates, you have to craft the ammo. Yeah. So then I'm like, I go to craft the ammo. I take fucking too long to do that because I don't know the menus and whatever, yeah. right? And then it's like, finally, I do that. And I'm like, okay, I've got ammo. Now I'll be ready when they, oh, and they're coming and attack me. I shoot them. Now I'm out of ammo. Well, now I need to make more ammo yep. because when they cut, so I just wasn't making any fucking progress. Yeah. Okay. But, and the, and apparently everyone was saying like, what, this is wild. Like, like today I started a new game Um, and, and I'll get to that after, but I played for like, I've had eight, eight hours, eight and a half hours. And I wasn't attacked once. Oh, and in five minutes of a tutorial, I was attacked 10 times. Is the tutorial static like that? Like it happens to everybody or does the tutorial take place randomly think, on the map and you just got like the suck <laughs> tutorial no, spot? No, I think they're, they're scenarios. So I think they're, I mean, they, they're, it's possible they're random, but I'd okay. be surprised if they were randomized. Yeah. Um. So people were saying like, dude, I don't remember. <laughs> Apparently like, so, so 2.0 just came out, right? They were basically saying like, Oh, um, okay. People were saying, like, I don't remember the tutorial being like this. Like, the tutorial sucks oh, now. Because, yeah, this game's been out for forever, so the tutorial could have been updated at some point and, or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's been out for like 10 years. And 2.0 came out, like I said, it just got yeah. released. And there's a ton of changes. Okay. Like a ton of changes. Um, so basically, I got like, I don't even know, some percentage of the way through the tutorial. And I just said, fuck it. And I started a game. So then I played for like three or four hours. And by then, I figured out, I learned like, yep. I had learned what the addition sign was and what the subtraction sign was. And I was getting a handle on the multiplication sign. But looking at the base I had set up and everything, I'm like, it's a fucking nightmare mess because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, of course. And it's it's actually kind of cumbersome to go through and like click, bloop, click, bloop, for one block at a time. Yeah. Click, bloop, click, bloop. Oh, my inventory's full. Yeah. There's no trash can. So you have to like craft a box to put the stuff in the box and shoot the box. And that's how you get rid of shit. It's like, <laughs> dude, it's like, so, so basically I'm like, all right, now I know the beginning language of the game yes. i'm gonna start a new game fair so i started over and it's also nice to like start fresh right so i yep. experienced the beginning game again um and then i got i don't know i want to say like 70 percent of the way through probably the game uh, i'm just guessing i'm probably off right okay. it's close enough um and had a really well-designed pretty massive base and i was thinking like but but this type of game, it goes well when you're planning ahead. Yeah. It's like building seems, a house, yeah, right? Like, like you, you you need plans. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you don't know that you're going <laughs> to want a bedroom because you've never heard of a bedroom, yeah. how do you plan for a bedroom? You know what I mean? For so, sure. So I just ended up with like a ton of effectively tech debt. Okay. Like this yeah. this game this game is and someone actually made a video and it, and it's I haven't watched the video I'm probably not going to watch it but because I know it, what it's going to say. Yeah. This this game is software engineering embodied. Yeah. Um like even more so than satisfactory. That's and, so funny. Um so like literally I was starting it, it was actually pretty well designed because I knew yeah the concepts from satisfactory and from software engineering yeah yeah these different things like having um you know a messaging bus which is basically pub sub which is like you have this central entity that is i'm gonna broadcast messages certain messages there's certain kinds of messages and anybody who wants to hear the messages all they need to do is subscribe and they just listen on this bus yeah so let's say oh i want messages about x and y okay cool you sit there and all of a sudden X and Y. Oh, okay. Do something based on that. Yep. When when A, B, and C come by, you don't care. You don't yep. care, right? Yeah. So you're just like compartmentalized. You know about the things that you want. Yeah. So each one of those things that are subscribed to the bus, the bus is basically just like rows of iron, copper, whatever. Yeah. It's just rows. And then what you do is you branch off what you need. Let's say this recipe for this thing, it needs green circuits copper yeah wire and like iron plates you just take those three branch them off and then you make like a vertical column that is just things building what you need yeah and then when you're done you send it back and then that thing you just sent back you can now put on the bus and people yeah. who need it later can gotcha. get it yeah yep but i basically put everything on the bus because i didn't know what i was going to need yeah. but it turns out like you only need, you know, stone for like two things. So I don't need nine uh, million feet yeah. of like stone along a wire. It's taking yep. up space. Yep. So what I started to do yesterday after <clears throat> it was probably about two days of playing, maybe like 20 hours or something. I was like, um, actually three days. So probably like closer to 30 hours. I basically was like, so what I was going to do, um, was like refactor and clean everything up in where i was mm -hmm. rather than start a new game fresh and i'm like maybe what i'll do is i'll just deal with what i have the the main game the mission for like 1.0 was basically like build a spaceship and blast off oh. and that was like credits roll yeah 2.0 is that's effectively the beginning yeah that's when it starts because now you can land and start a new base on another planet right yeah yeah but not only that but like so you launch a spaceship and now the spaceship is almost like a mini factory that you need to like attack asteroids and whatever. And oh. you can put things on it. So it acts as like a shuttle between planets. So it's almost like 
because you can have little mini factories with trains and stuff in between. Yeah. The spaceship is just a train between, between planets. planets. So, but then you land on, there's one planet that's like all volcanoes, giant like dune worms that just come and eat your shit. There's another one that's all like Jesus. spider. So, and they all have their own unique ecosystems and unique science yeah. crafting, all this stuff. So, so I was like, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll just start fresh with a clean design on the next planet. And then some, I hadn't bought the DLC yet. So I'm like, I wasn't even sure if I was going to like yeah. the game. So I'm like, I'll just do it on the next planet. I'll probably be done in the next couple of days and I'll launch into space. And, and I was reminded that what I've heard apparently from the devs and also from everyone in the community, they're like, if you want to start a space age version of the game, like the DLC, you should just start a f game fresh. It'll work, uh, but there's like enough different that there'll be some weirdness and whatever. So I was like, oh, I'll just, oh, wait, I don't want to carry over this save into yeah. the DLC. But at this point now, I'm four days into playing. I know I'm going to get the DLC. I just bought the DLC and, and started, started fresh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm on playthrough number three. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, But I, I haven't beaten the game. I haven't launched a rocket yet or whatever, but. This game is effectively, it is, it's the same like genre as Satisfactory. Yeah, but very but different. it's not, there's a lot of the similar mechanics. It's just not the same yeah. game. First of all, it's top down. It's older, top down 2D. Yep. Which you would think removing a dimension might make things simpler. <laughs> it, it actually doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> because now... Rather than weaving the spaghetti vertically, well, now you only have yeah two dimensions. Yeah, you can't hide so you the spaghetti to... underneath. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and not only that, but it dude, the complexity just ramps up and ramps up and ramps up and ramps up to the point where, um, I I got to. I think it was a major like threshold in the game where you basically <clears throat> unlock this logistic system with these robots. Okay. So you can have like basically in your backpack this little robot robo port, but you can also have a bunch of robo ports around the place and they form a network. So if they're close enough, they can communicate. Nice. And basically you can make thousands of these robot drones. Okay. That you can say, hey, these 17 entities, they all are looking for fuel. Whenever anything makes fuel, put it in this, like, distribute it equally between all uh. these roboports in the system, in the network, and then anything that needs it will request it, and then the robots will just autonomously go grab the thing. So you build this whole logistic system Jesus. where it's things that are scheduled, things that are requesting things, things that are storing things, but also... It makes it so that, like, if you have an entire, like, giant area, you can just click and drag all of it and just say, like, delete it. And the robots will go brrr, and just dismantle ah. everything, take all the parts, put it in storage. Or you can say, you know, control X. If, like, if you put something down one tile too far, you can, like, m cut and paste. Yeah. And you... they'll they'll do it all nice. autonomously which changes the fucking yeah, game yeah 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 yeah. so now you just copy paste copy paste copy paste and now you're like you have become a deity whereas before you're like yeah 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 now you're just like factory you know yep so what you can do is you can build like okay i need to go make a new coal mining thing yep i'm sick of getting attacked you just can build a thing and then control v on top of it which is like okay there's four wall thick uh wall Yep. around this whole mining setup with all the electricity, all the piping and the wiring and yeah. everything set up. And then there's flamethrower turrets and fucking nuke launchers <laughs> all around that all have logistics set up to where when a train comes, it'll deliver all the repair kits and ammo. The bots will distribute it evenly. Dang. So, and I got into that like five, six, seven hours yesterday. And then I was like, restart. So, yep, yep. And it gets even more complex you can it's like they have the equivalent of minecraft redstone circuits oh my god except it's even more deep you, you can't it's one of those games that you could make a computer in 
Um, Which I'm sure someone has or will. Yeah, so... I've been trying not to consume really much content for Yeah, totally it. understandable. Um now, surprisingly enough, I've I've arrived at like pretty close to some like meta sort of things patterns, yeah. which I'm kind of proud of. Um just by like logicking it out. Yeah. Um That's so sick. But yeah, the game is like crack. It I was super triggered yesterday um because again, I had didn't know what I was in for. Yeah. 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 This time around, I like had a plan yeah. up to what I knew, but also with a mind for in software, you never know what you're going to do years from now. So you build things with that in mind. Yeah. To be, yeah. to be as black box as possible, as flexible, as expandable, as extensible yep. as possible. Right. So I did that with the factory. Yeah. Um, but I did all of it without ever getting attacked by any of the aliens. Ah. And then all of a sudden, my they get pissed off by pollution. So the pollution spreads, 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 hits their nests, and then they're like, fuck they just this. just lose it. So basically, all of a sudden, my power goes out, and I see a bloop, 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 <laughs> like warning, 6, 18, 30, 50... Uh, miners being destroyed, walls being destroyed, poles being destroyed, everything. Just everything getting destroyed, and it's like a three-minute fucking run from where I am. <laughs> and it's like, I don't even have ammo because I haven't had to fight anything. Yep. And they just destroyed all my shit. So then I go, and it's like, oh my god, I have to... So I'm pulling all this stuff together, and the mining is what is sustaining the rest of yep. the factory. So now everything stops producing everything stops producing right yep. it's like unplugging your refrigerator at a restaurant yep so i fix that all up and i'm a third of the way through fixing that up and now they're attacking my main baits yeah so all i did for like five hours it's just was like I repairing was yeah because i was like i can't even it's not that they stunted my progress is that i'm making negative progress because yeah they're tearing down the infrastructure that I need to be able to craft the stuff to fight back. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So that was really tough yep. because basically like my knowledge of, of this kind of game helped me kind of expand really fast, really far Yeah, with the base without knowing the defensive. So now this time around I like set up a boiler and it's like, nine feet of walls on either side and turrets and i've been playing for nine hours and nothing attacked me but at least now i'm like fucking ready yeah this time you're going to them that's what i saw when i when i popped in is you out there hunting them this time yeah i was chucking grenades and shit uh from my little <laughs> minivan yeah <laughs> throwing nades out the window while using like the turret while driving yeah the yeah car yeah while it, yeah it's 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 rough so but the game is that's awesome. It's, it's more engaging, less fun. Okay. But far more challenging and like cerebral than satisfactory. Yeah. Satisfactory is way more chill. Yep. Because nothing ever comes to attack you. If you like put down a power pole, yeah. it's like nothing spawns here anymore. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So like you have to go out and look for it. Yeah. Um. Whereas this is like a fucking tower defense game. Yeah. Yeah. Without, yeah. Without realizing it. So, um. But yeah, the game is incredible, and I'm addicted, and <laughs> I'm not doing anything for the next four, probably six months. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How many planets are there? Is there a set amount, or is it like? I I I know of two others, but I've Dang. like I said, I've been trying not to spoil things but yeah, i think there's fair, two others fair. yeah 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 um yeah that's that's awesome that's freaking sick yeah i'm addicted yeah we need the like we need the three to five hour like documentary not on factorio but like on games like satisfactory and factorio and where they sit and why they scratch the itch and like how they're different i need it i need a video essay on the genre it's it, it'll be a 45 second video 
And it's in order to do A, you really want to do A. Okay. Yep. You really want to do A. In order to do A, you need to do B and C. Yep. You start to look into C. In order to do C, you need D and E. Yep. So then it's like, okay, cool. Not that bad. I'm going to start doing E. Then you're getting attacked. And you realize that in order to defend the thing, you need to do F, G, H, and I. Yep. But in order to do I, you need H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, right? So it's like, and then fucking four hours later, you're like, I was trying to do A, and I never got to E, and like, fuck, dude. It's it's just, oh shit, I was supposed to yeah. be doing this, the game. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Apparently, people keep referencing, I have to go back and watch. People keep referencing, there's like an episode, I think, of Malcolm in the Middle, where like the dad has some like chores or something he needs to do, some tasks. And he can just never finish anything. He just keeps getting like distracted, uh, um, you know, by other shit. And that's basically, yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't achieve anything I planned on doing for the last like two days. There's just always like, oh shit! In order to do this, yep. I need to do this. I, dude, I'm, I'm with you though. Sometimes that's just like fun because it's just like endless stuff to do. Dude, it deletes time. I it believe deletes it. deletes time. Like, literally, I got up at, like, 8. I started streaming super early. And I look up, and it's, like, 6.20. And I'm like, fuck, the podcast <laughs> in 10 minutes. I'm like, I got so much shit to do. I haven't gotten anything done. And it's been nine hours. That's insane. I haven't. I feel like I have made no progress. It's been nine hours. That's awesome. The day just, it just got deleted. I miss that i want that i want a game like that that's cool and play factorial it's multiplayer is it real? oh yeah we talked about that yeah 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 it's, it, there's a contract you're gonna have to sign don't touch the uh, main bus yeah yeah don't touch the main bus that's now i right. understand the meme the the it, it's the tweet is even better now yeah yeah that, that i know the game don't touch the main bus that's dope that's cool man hell yeah um, I hear some shit's been going bro, down. Some shit's been going down in Tarkov. Yeah, I mean, we had like, it, it's been like, we haven't had anything, any event, any news, any nothing really since the wipe. And so it's been a barren wasteland, uh, out in Tarkovsville. And then, um, and then all of a sudden it was just like, everything was going to happen on one day, which was yesterday. So like everybody was everybody was like wanting a Halloween event because they've done a bunch of Halloween events and they're always really fun. They're always like crazy. And so people are like, yo, where's the Halloween event? And like a few days ago, Nikita was like, don't worry about the Halloween event. That's just all he tweeted was don't worry about the Halloween event. And everybody was like, what does that mean? Does that mean there's no Halloween event or does that mean you guys have it covered and it's coming? And then, yes, and then two days ago, we got like a tweet and it was like, hey, tomorrow we're doing patch 15.5 uh, the game's going to be down for eight hours. And we were like, okay, sweet new patch tomorrow. And then like 20 minutes later, they were like, to join us tomorrow for Tarkov TV live. And so it was just like, all of a sudden it just went from zero to a hundred and we had like a bunch of stuff. So, well, I guess we'll talk about it in order, which was, we woke up that morning and they took the game down and did the patch and gave us patch notes. Then they did Tarkov TV. Then they did, um, and then we, then that we went into, uh, the Halloween event, but so 15.5, they, they released a roadmap like way, like a month ago, <laughs> they released a mode roadmap. We were supposed to get two arena patches and the upgrade to the new engine unity 2022 before this patch. What was that? What year again? Sorry. Yeah, Unity 2022. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Sorry, I just wasn't sure. No, I yeah, it is 2024. You're not wrong. November, actually. Almost 2025. We were <laughs> supposed to get the upgrade to Unity 2022 before this, but we didn't hear anything about that. And then we got this patch. And so then we were all like, well, obviously, they just rolled that update into 15.5, right? Wrong as you would suspect. So we skipped over Unity 2020 
two again. But we did get, not to be a negative Nancy, we did get a few cool quality of life things that are sick. This patch is really small, like, but it's a mid-white patch, so they're not normally humongo. You can now organize your stash while you're matching, while you're loading into a raid. Mm -hmm. so down at the bottom it's just you can hit character and it's your stash and everything on the left like everything on your person is like a big it's like red and it's like you cannot adjust your kit while you're loading into raid but you can organize your stash you can move stuff around you can use the sorting table you can even list items on the flea while you are that's nice yep while you that's are huge. um loading into raid which is cool and then there's also it's uh it's cool now because um also while you're loading into raid, you know how like your character is like right there on the left with like everything you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Well, now there's like a new UI. If you're in a group on the left side of the screen, there's a list of everyone in your group and you can, can you click on them and their character pops up and there's a little eyeball next to the name. And if you click it, it opens up a menu and it shows everything that they're bringing. You know what's so funny about that? What? They're fucking spaghetti from like 10 years ago. Yeah. Allowed that to happen. Remember back in the day when there was like a queue, like you were looking for a group? Yes. You could go into the logs in just like Tarkov logs and like in one of the files, it would show the like JSON dump of all the oh character information, God. like their account info. So, like, I remember, I don't remember if it was you, and I, I think I've said this five times. There was one point where I was queued with someone, and it was like, yo, you got a marked key in your third slot in your docs case? And they were like, what? <laughs> How the fuck did you know that? And I was like, because the game has all the information about every Everyone player's and everything. inventory, inventory, like, you know. That's Well, now. Yeah, well, now it's being used to display that. So it's kind of cool because um, uh, it's kind of cool because you can just like see what your friends are bringing. You can see if your freaking friend is bringing your stuff back, if he's bringing it back. What I will say, though, is it farther it further solidifies the gold medal top number one in the world for worst design streamer mode of all time. Because if you have streamer mode, not only is your name not covered on everyone in your parties, like if if you have streamer mode on and you're grouped with me on my screen, now your name is just permanently on my screen because that's what I click on. It doesn't say streamer. It says that. But you want to know something else? On your screen, your name is shown even if you have streamer mode on. So it is quite like, dude, they, just, they built it completely without streamer mode in mind. Basically. It's the worst streamer mode. The streamer mode arguably just like I dude, it does nothing. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, I've literally never turned on streamer mode for that. It's not like I'm like, oh, my God, I need it. You know, what was me? I'm a streamer. I'm just saying it's like, yeah, yeah. like if you're going to put it in, make it work. You know what I mean? You're the one that put it in. I didn't put it in. So make it work. So I think that's funny, but definitely a W that you can mess around with your stash while you're loading in. Awesome to see. It's something we've wanted for forever. It makes the matching times go by quicker uh, and it just pulls you out when it goes to like a waiting session start or loading loot or something. I don't know. It just pulls you out. Totally mm -hmm. fine. Uh, they're reworking achievements. Now they're uh, going to be adding achievements that give you permanent rewards. Uh, one of them being the tracksuit. So now if you kill Kill 100 times, you get the achievement for killing Kill 100 times and you get the tracksuit every wipe forever. Uh, and so that's the like pretty much the only one. I'm sure they're going to add more achievements in the future that then do more things, but um, mm -hmm. achievements. Cool beans. I've never gotten the tracksuit. I probably never will. But W quality of life update because the people that do don't have to lose all those brain cells doing it every wipe. Uh, pinning and locking in your stash. So, uh, I I'm not too sure why they divided this up into two, but, uh, you can pin an item in your stash, meaning 
that it's not going to move when you auto sort. But if you go into a raid, anytime you go into a raid, all, everything pinned automatically unpins. But then there's a separate locking feature where if you lock something, it never moves and never gets unlocked. So I've just, I'm just been locking everything. Like if I'm pinning something, I don't want it. I don't ever want it to move. I don't want it to just not move right now. But I guess there's something to be said. If you're going to do it, overdo it, don't underdo it. You know what I mean? So I'm not 100% yeah. sure why. It's probably a use case for for when you'd want to yeah. like do something once versus multiple times. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Maybe that's it. Like it's 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 exactly <laughs> this feature doesn't do anything. I it doesn't it's not missing anything I wanted to do. It just has some extra stuff where I'm like, oh, I don't know what that's for. But who cares? I would rather th them overdo it than underdo it. So so yeah, you can lock stuff locked locked items so like you can lock a um you can lock like a corrugated hose and that locked thing can be put in a case so that like you don't have to store everything locked outside of cases and that means mm -hmm. anything locked won't be used in crafts it won't be used in hideout upgrades it won't be used in anything it can't be sold on accident so like sometimes if you're selling and you click you know, auto select all on the flea market. And you're like, oh no, I meant to save two corrugated hoses. I sold them all. They were found in raid, whatever. So it's like locked. It means if it's a case that's locked, it's never, it won't move. If it's an item that's locked, it means you can't sell it. You can't do anything. So it's like really is going to be great for like early wipe um, and for like stash organization, just like putting cases somewhere and then auto sorting from there or whatever. So W quality of life. That's something we've wanted for a long time. Uh, the, uh, season moved to fall we have never had fall before last year uh like december january like january of this year they did winter and that was the first time we got snow and then we've been getting seasons all year they were so because of that we never had fall fall looks gorgeous it genuinely does um did some fixes and we got a new gun the uh mps auto assault 12 gen 1 and gen 2 the aa12 fully automatic 12 gauge shotguns <laughs> Yes. Those are is the fire rate like it's slow. It's really slow. Like bung, 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 yeah. bung, like I can it's interesting. So I unlocked it, I grabbed it, I took it into the firing range, and when you full auto it, the recoil is like crazy mode. If you put it in semi-auto and I tap as fast as I can, I'm the exact same fire rate as it full auto, and there's no recoil. It's like dun, 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 dun. But when you switch to full auto, it's like dun, 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 dun. So it's like no one's ever gonna use it. But it's cool. <laughs> yeah, and anyone can fucking click yeah. twice a second. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, and it there's like three different variants. One of it is a Terra Group Labs branded variant of it, which is kind of cool. It's not like a skin you put on, it's like a the chassis has like the logo on it. Um huh. it's cool. But and then they added a bunch of new mods. You can mod the scar out way more now. You can mod the uh, G36 way more out. And there's like new AUG bodies. There's like a black one and you can mod those out. Uh, so cool. So that was the patch. It, it's it's one of those. This was one of those. It's hard to like people are like, how do you think about the patch? What's the patch? You know, what, what are your vibes on the patch? It's hard because like, A, I don't like I'm trying to just like not care and B I don't want to be a negative Nancy because like every single one of those things is awesome like so glad it's in the game done well like not done poorly quality of life features we've been asking for for forever but suspiciously missing from those patch notes but was on the roadmap for patch 15.5 was sound engine improvements technical upgrades expansion to new mechanics added in 15.5 AI behavior adjustments game client performance optimization so it's like so it's like, what do you think about the patch? It's like, this stuff is cool for sure. I'm super glad it's in the game. Like, I don't care what cool and fun things come to the game anymore until we fix the fucking sound. You know what I mean? So it's like, so I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. It's like, dude, every single thing put in this patch and the, the designers who worked on this patch, kudos to you. The, the, these things are well fleshed out ideas. Awesome. But it's just like, I have 22 FPS on streets. I can't hear anything. You know what I mean? It's like, it's cool that I can mess with my stash while I'm loading into the menu, but. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, good patch, good job, but where's the, you know, 
You Need 2022 was supposed to be out forever ago, and that was supposed to give you guys some more headroom to maybe work on the stuff, and then that's getting pushed, and it's like, <sighs> cool. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, all right, cool, man. Good patch. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I know how I feel. I know how I feel. And I'm not going to get worked up about it, like on stream or anything, but I don't know how to communicate that. And when there's a new patch, I'm getting asked all day how I feel. Like internally, I know how I feel. I I know that I am a mature enough to hold both of those things, right? I can be yeah. like, all this stuff is sick, but like... But you can't like communicate that with any nuance. Exactly. But I don't, I don't care. Repeatedly. Nothing's really getting me excited about Tarkov until we <laughs> figure out the stuff. So I know, like, my opinion is rock solid inside, but I'm getting asked a million times a day. And if I do try to explain it, explaining it, like you said, with nuance means it takes me long enough to explain it that somebody pops in at the end of me explaining it and going, what do you mean? I thought the patch is great. And it's like, and so I just like... And then you get numb to answering to the point where... I sound like a dick. Like, I'm just like this dude, guy yeah. that's not answering. It's like, well, I just want to know your opinion. Like, you're my favorite streamer, man. And it's like, it's it's maddening. It's like, I... So and that that's... That's no, I get it. Dude. That was that was me. Every fourteen seconds, someone saying, "How does this compare to Satisfactory?" Yeah. yeah. While I'm Malding, getting attacked, all my shit's fucked on fire. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm just like, it's fucking good, dude. But also, it sucks. <laughs> I hate I, this I hate game. It. This game is dog shit, and I'm gonna play it forever. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this game, and I'm gonna play it forever. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm turning into you. And you're turning back into Tarkov. <laughs> you're turning back into a Tarkov man. Yeah, except in this case, it really is not to say there weren't skill issues with Tarkov. Yeah, yeah. My frustrations didn't come from skill issues. They came from the non-skill issues. Yeah. And all my frustrations yesterday were... They were skill issues. Yeah. Okay. Which someone came in and said... Skill issue? Question mark? <laughs> First time chatter. I was like, yeah, of course it's a skill issue. The game's still dog shit. When I say when I say the game is dog shit, th there's like, <sighs> yeah, you gotta you gotta understand. There are there's two meanings to this game is dog shit. Yeah, there is the game is bad, and then there is I fucking suck at this game. Yes, <laughs> I yeah. wish I was better. And you gotta just look at the context clues, man. Yep. Factorio is a good game. You should just know. You should just know that I know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like at the very least, at the very least, you have to wait until the dust settles to determine what the this game is dog shit, which one it was. But don't poke the bear in the middle of the this game is dog shit. Sometimes we yeah. all say that, bro. We all say that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what game you've played. You've done something that was obviously a skill issue and been like this freaking game. It's just part of it, man. And then we release it. We get it out of our bodies. And we circle back and we go, oh, you know what I should have done, Chad? I should have done this, that, the other. And then we do it and we all move on. We all freaking move on. Anyways, speaking of moving on, before we move on and talk about the Tarkov TV and some of the other stuff that went on, I do want to take a second and thank the sponsor for this week's episode. And that is Mando. Uh, you may have heard of Mando before. Mando's a brand all about smelling good. And they have some phenomenal products. Uh, one of their biggest things is their whole body deodorant. Stress, yes, whole body. It is derma dermatologist tested and gentle on all of your bits. And what's great is that their deodorant is comes in like every type of deodorant you would want. They've got this stick deodorant that you can stick it anywhere you want. They've got like, um, not... I wish I had that in college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not liquid, but like tube of like tube deodorant. So it's easier to just like put anywhere you want and spray. And so it's the same stuff. Like it's the same goodness anywhere you want it, which is nice because some people don't like the stick. You know what I mean? Some people like to just like psh, psh, under the shirt, psh, under the pants, wherever you need it. It controls odor for 72 hours, clinically proven. And you can choose from their four cologne quality scents. And this is our both of our feedback in the past was that like their their scents were very like very different 
than others yeah. and in a good way. You know what I mean? Like nowadays you go to down the shampoo aisle or whatever and you crack it open and it's like strawberry, watermelon, kiwi, SpongeBob flavor. And it's just like, it's crazy. These like smell good. Brother bourbon leather. Yes. I've been, I've been, I've been messing with the, um, the acidified body wash, which I gotta yes. say, which I gotta say is I, I, I've been either using like my wife's, like yeah. liquid dove whatever yeah. or like I, 47 and one <laughs> like the 40 yeah it's exactly it's toothpaste and you know yeah car engine cumin. oil <laughs> yeah um no but this uh this stuff is is yeah is phenomenal i actually come out of the shower feeling so clean my wife loves the way i smell i love the way i smell the bourbon leather yeah leather tobacco and vanilla yeah i gotta say those three scents together yeah i love it yeah dude. it's crazy it's uh it smells amazing the mount fuji one of the ones i got was in the mount fuji that also smells phenomenal and this is cool too they have an unscented version of all those as well i know a lot of people kind of prefer that. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of people that either don't use deodorant too often, maybe want just after or they're they working out or, or they have cologne, they have a scent or something like that. So in all of those things, you can get the unscented version as well, which keeps you like from smelling bad, but you don't have to overwhelmingly smell like one thing. I wouldn't because their smells smell so good. But the fact that you can is really cool. Same thing with their body wash. The body wash comes in, you can get a cleansing bar or you can get the liquid body wash. Uh, they've also got like the deodorant wipes, which are like, wet wipes infused with their deodorant product, which after being a parent, wipes are, wet wipes are just goaded. Like we'll, I'll, we'll never not carry wet wipes for all of time. And these are like a shower in a wet wipe. That, that's the one thing I got it's out of COVID so sick. is that, is that wet wipes are goaded. Dude, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so these are like a shower in a wet wipe, which is phenomenal. So yeah, everything I've used from them smells amazing, works really well, um, convenient. And uh, that's kind of been my thing is that it's just cool that they like provide everything, however you want your deodorant, however you want it to smell, even if you don't want it to smell, it's pretty sick. So um, whole body deodorant, it was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's American made. It's a powerful enough to take on the toughest body odor, but be gentle enough to use everywhere, allowing you to put Mando on your family jewels without a worry. Mando's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, cruelty-free, dye-free, and vegan. Uh, so it's pretty sick. The Mando Starter Pack uh, is perfect for new customers. It comes with the solid stick deodorant, the cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Uh, and we have a discount code to get you hooked on your favorite stuff. Uh, new customers can get $5 off a starter pack with their exclusive code, which is 40% off the starter pack when it's all together, the starter pack is already discount $5 off. Use code podcast at shopmando.com. S H O P M A N D O.com. Um, use code podcast. Support our show and tell them we sent you. Thank you so much to Mando for sponsoring this episode. I want to go take another shower now. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay. So after. The patch, and then, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So that was the patch. Those were the patch notes. The timing of it all was super interesting because, A, the patch was basically just those three things, right? Like, you can check your stash while you're loading. You get to keep your tracksuit forever. And you can pin stuff to your cases. But it was an eight-hour downtime. And what was weird was it was an eight-hour downtime. The patch was supposed to come back up at 11. But the Tarkov TV Live was supposed to start at 11.30. And I was like, there's no way they're going to bring the patch up and then want everybody to watch the Tarkov TV. And so, as I suspected, the patch never got officially delayed, but they just started Tarkov TV up at 11.30 and the patch didn't go live until Tarkov TV was... So they should have just said it was 10-hour downtime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know why they did it that way, but... Um, but it was 10 hours of downtime. The game was down for forever. Um, but so there's a, a, so Tarkov TV was pretty cool. 
they talked at first about Arena, of course, because if they talk about it at the end, everybody will leave. Um, but basically, the patches we were supposed to get before this patch are going to be coming sometime soon. <laughs> he didn't really give a date. Um, but they showed off a few things. The Fort map, which we played at TwitchCon. Um, they showed Demirka played in a round of... It, there's a new game mode called Checkpoint, which is basically domination. Two, two zones where you capture them and you get points, and it's a respawn mode. Genuinely excited about that because Last Hero is super fun, but solo free-for-all can get exhausting, uh, especially because I still hold the opinion that the maps are either too small or there are too many PMCs. I think Last Hero is like super fun, but it just gets too overwhelming. This, on this and the other like regular maps, having a 5v5 mode where when you die, you just respawn, and you're just trying to cap the point. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited. That looks that looks fun. So, and then on the new map, which looks cool. I like I I do like that. There's only two. Yeah, two points. Because every other game has had three. Yeah. And I tell you, it's literally their team is on A, your team is on C. Yeah. 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 You cap it. Everybody leaves A. You leave C. Yep. Yep. You, you go to B, they go to A, and it's like it's like two people go in the middle, and then they fight over whatever, and it you know it just flops back and forth, and then A and C flop back and forth, and yep, yeah, yep. So there's going to be two points, which is cool, and uh, I'm pretty excited. Once again, as always, I'm rooting for Arena. <laughs> there, there's just no real reason to play it other than for Tarkov, but I hope that they find that reason eventually. They're supposed to on the roadmap. There's stuff like battle pass and ranked system and all this kind of stuff. We don't have that yet, but that'd be cool. What they did show off is, bro, two new grenades, okay? They showed off this thing. It's called a V40. He said it's like a real grenade. I haven't looked it up. It looks like they took the JPEG for an M67 and made it tiny. It's like, an, it's like a freaking plum peach pit. It's this big. And he like is holding it in his hand but basically they said, so apparently it's a real grenade that's just small. The reason they did this was because they were like, too many people are dying to grenades in Arena. So we wanted to bring a less powerful grenade. So like this blast radius is smaller. So hopefully less mm. people are going to die, which is very, it's very true. It You can die quite often. But more importantly, he showed off and I don't know why they didn't just fix the old ones, but I don't care. He showed off a new smoke grenade and they showed it and it's great. It's finally great. Once it again, worked. I don't it worked. I don't know why they didn't just like fix the other ones, but it's a it's a yellow smoke grenade and it like you throw it and like a little bit of smoke came out and I was like, no way. And then it just went poof, like from the time the smoke started coming out to like functional, actual good smoke grenade was like a second, second and a half. And I was like, oh my God. And he was and like, that, is it like opaque? No, you cannot see. Well, I don't know what opaque means. You can't see through you, it at all. It's the opposite of transparent. Okay. Okay. You can't see through it at all. Yeah. It, is it client side? <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> We're going to find out. But bro, it is was amazing. And I don't care about it in Arena. He said it's coming to Tarkov 2 after we put it in Arena. That's all I care about. I want smokes so bad. I've been playing PUBG. Like I'm telling you, I've been playing Delta Force. Smoking is so huge in those games. I want smokes. You heard it here first, kids. Smoking is huge in those games. <laughs> and, uh, and now we have the menu where if you hold G in Tarkov, if you have multiple different grenades, you hold G and you scroll wheel, you can select what you nade you want to throw. So, I'm so excited. I really hope. I'm so excited for that to come to Tarkov. Um, they're working on an are uh, arena achievement system. Cool beans. There's now a little MVP animation that plays at the end where it shows the, the, the guy who did the best. Cool. The guy's like... <laughs> yeah. But the ban who catch. Ban in the ban. He just you had a Dougie. Yep. We were talking about that. It's like, bro, I want to be hitting the gritty on my way to the point. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is. But... <laughs> hitting the gritty. Just Google it. 
Is that like skibbity toilet? <laughs> it's a dance. Just that's <laughs> that's the worst. Honestly, the the gritty is is it called the gritty? Yeah. Or or is it? Do you have to say hitting the gritty? Well, you it's the gritty. You learn how to do the gritty, and then you hit the gritty. Honestly, the gritty is a better name than the Dougie, so and I yeah. still don't know how to do the Dougie, and it's been what like fifteen fucking years, so I mean, maybe they have a marketing. <sighs> that was problem. so funny. The words were coming out of my mouth, and I just like knew you were about to be like, "What the hell did you just say?" <laughs> Anyways, that they're gonna fix. <laughs> they're gonna fix the fact that the quests th in between Tarkman Arena have been broken for three months. They say that they're gonna fix that. Yeah, whatever. And the uh, arena, they're doing a tournament, Arena Cup tournament. Then they started talking about um, Unity, and he addressed the fact that it's... He's not... He said... He said, hey, I'm almost positive it's going to come in the New Year's wipe. So he's not even 100% sure we're going to get Unity 2022 by 2025. <clears throat> Five. <clears throat> um, but then... Then the... It, the the focus changed to Tarkov and to 16.0. So I'll 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 send you some screenshots here. Uh, I don't want to send you videos because that would be too much. Don't send me fucking JFIFs or whatever no, you send me. No, they're normally. not going to be JFIFs. They might be JFIFs. Yo, Mid Journey, dude. The only DMs I get these days are updates for Mid Journey. Oh yeah. And I'm and I'm all for uh, not getting not getting pinged eight billion times a day. There's that, which that looks like an an MPX, the nine millimeter Sig MPX, but it's three hundred blackout. It's the Sig MCX, and I'm very excited about that because three hundred blackout is just a caliber that's done really dirty. There's only one gun and really one made up one way to mod it. So that magazine does not look like blackout. I know. Isn't that weird? Um, and then we'll also be getting this along with that, which is the <laughs> what are they called? I forget. The, it's the hundred round mag with the two bulbous things and then the, the the double tub. Yeah, the double tub. The dub tub. So we're getting that. Just a dual drum mag. Yeah. Is there, does it have a name? And then we're also getting this one for the Uzi. Which is the dub, the double tub, but with a longer shaft, and that's going to be nine millimeter. That's just a cock and balls. <laughs> that's just dude. a cock and balls, dude. You just sent me a picture of cock and balls. <laughs> yeah, the textured with like steel <laughs> in Unity. Yeah, <laughs> the C mag, uh, I think is what it's called. <laughs> More like the D mag. Hey, oh, skibbity toilet. I think that's. I think that's it. I think it was used right. And then they sent us a picture of the RPG 26, which is coming to Escape uh, from Tarkov me? in patch point 16. I don't know what the hell we're going to use this for, but we're getting an RPG. In the past, they talked about maybe blowing up the BTR. That seems crazy because, like, the BTR never is around and you want it to be. So it's, uh, is it, um, one time use? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know enough about the RPG 26 specifically. He literally was like, we were going to put another RPG in the game, but like this, that, and the other. And I don't really remember what he said. It might be one time use for that reason. Cause that's what he was saying. He was like, we were going to put this RPG in, but we decided that for this, that chat, let me know if you, I mean, like if you freaking yes, disposable people saying it is. Okay. So that is probably I, why. I literally have, I have a law, the M70 really? law, which is, which is a disposable. Yeah. Yeah. Just somewhere. I don't know. Okay. So that's, that is probably why then they did, they wanted it to be less toxic and less meta. So they're bringing that it's one time use. I imagine this will get relegated to the six shot grenade launcher, which will be, people will find them. They'll hoard them, and at the end of the wipe, they'll take them to labs and meme with them. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much what I'm assuming. I, I I would love to be wrong and for there to be, like, clear function where, like, you don't want to troll with it because you got one, and if you go blow up this wall, it's like it's like loot or something, you know what I mean? But It'd be cool if it was a key, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that'd be so weapon. sick. But I doubt it. Um, So we got the RPG. <coughs> Um, I can't wait to see fucking Tagilla 
like tank a face shot dude. <laughs> directly. Yes, to- actually. Yes. Um, they talked about how um they're gonna go, they're gonna do winter again, and they showed off a couple of these screenshots, some winter camouflages. So they didn't say if this was going to be like a skin you put on clothes to for winter, or if it's just going to be like new clothes that they're adding for winter. But they said they're adding winter camo. It's kind of cool. Um, we are getting the prestige system in a patch point sixteen, which is exciting. Um. He said that the prestige system will eventually go to 10 levels. You'll be able to prestige 10 times. That's launching with the first two. And then he rattled off a ton of stuff. He's like, you're going to be able to get new cosmetics like hats. You're going to get melee weapons, armbands, dog tags, skins for your secure container, main menu backgrounds. Like, There's going to be like tons of different stuff. You're going to, he rattled off a bunch. Like I just like wrote down as many as I could hear, um, which I think, all of that is the perfect way to go. Like, I don't think you prestige and get like 10 extra lines on your stash and bigger pockets. Like the people that want to prestige are good enough that they don't need 10 extra lines in their stash. They don't need extra money. They don't need extra guns. They're good enough to get to level 70 in eight hours. Like just give them a freaking armband and call it a day. That will be sufficient for most of them. You know what I mean? So um, it's just they sh- there should be like an AK that's like golden that you can only craft. Yeah. I I am down with gun craft. skins as like a part of this. I know that like 50% of the Tarkov audience just freaking shuddered. Um there's already a golden TT. There's it's a swag. There's like, a golden TT. I found this out. Uh Knight, like one of the goons, Knight has his own deagle. He gets like a deagle with like a zebra sh- print on it. And we got a golden TT. And we got the Terror Group Labs shotgun. It's like, dude, just freaking give me some camos. Give me like a digital camo to put on my M4 if I'm prestige level three. That would be, that would go so hard. That'd be so sick. Give me a digital camo for my digital gun. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, no need to like, we don't know exactly. We don't know a a lot of questions. People like, what level? I don't know. There's surely you're not going to only be able to prestige it max level max level is like 77 and nobody freaking gets that it's a bajillion xp so i don't know if it's going to be max traders if it's going to be level 50 if it's going to be level 60 if there's going to be knowing bsg it's going to be quest it's going to be like you have to complete 87 lightkeeper quests and then you can prestige who knows um but um uh the prestige is coming i've said for a while now i don't even know if i'm going to be the a god that prestiges But I think that's so good to keep more people circulating through the Tarkov economy. You know what I mean? More people at level 12 and 15 and 30 and 40 and 50, as opposed to like right now, it seems like you're either level 22 or 65. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So like recycling them means there are more level 30s and 40s and stuff like that. And then the people who are currently level 20 might find it a little bit easier to quest because they're not going up against like it just might. I, I think I don't know, and I'll eat my words gladly if I'm wrong, but I just feel like this will be really good for the game long term. Um, They're reworking customs like they did to Factory. So I feel like I heard a rumor that they're going to do what they did to Factory to every map, which is like bring new assets in, like modernize them, which makes sense because customs is the other oldest map in the game, right? Like it was big map, small map, you know? Um, They showed, I'm not going to send them all to you because I have like 40, but they have it. They showed off a ton of screenshots they're going to do the same, give the same factory treatment where they open up new areas. Um, you mm-hmm. know, the building it's, it, you've never been able to go inside it, but it's been there the whole time. It's the building sniper scav spawns on right by construction, like the, like, um, two level, no walls construction thing. The sniper scav sits up on the middle. Like, they're opening up that whole building. Like he showed some screenshots of inside. I thought that like factory was like near there. Factory is over. Kind of by like a boiler. boiler. Yeah, nearer to that is where factory is. And you can see customs from in the new factory now. If you like get up and look out the windows, you can see like boiler and stuff. Oh, um, so you can see like where it mm-hmm, is. Yeah. Actually. Yep. 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 So, which is pretty cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of like behind old gas by, yeah, by boiler. It's cool. Um, so. Wait, was factory an, an existing building that was just not 
open yes, or you've is always it a been new able, building? No, you've always been able to see the buildings that were factory. Um, now you can see out from factory, which is cool. Yeah. And uh, so there's going to be more traversal on customs. It's going to bring it up to like a new visual standard that they're going for. Um, and then I'm sure they'll they'll take some time to add just like a billion little touches, just like they did with factory. Like almost every single part of factory has some sort of new, like, Ooh, that's a new angle. Ooh, that's a new peak. Ooh, that's a new way to traverse. And so it's going to be probably a whole new customs. Um, and it's not like he said, that's coming in freaking December, which sounds crazy because we just got the factory one. Uh, he said there's going to be new woods locations, not a complete redo of woods like that, but they're basically like a small woods expansion, which weirdly we got a super small woods expansion yesterday with the patch. I didn't know this until today. I was going around. We got three things. A, the scav PMC extract on woods. Did you ever take that? I don't It was just know. like in a random spot. They moved that. They moved scav PM extracts to like, the new area of woods, like way back okay. in the corner. I never really take it on woods, but it moved. We got a new extract on woods. We got a green flare extract, which I love as a conditional extract. They've gone through many iterations. You know, you, we've got D2, we've got the labs ones, we've got no bag, we've got all this kind of stuff. My favorite thing they've done is green flare because green flares are cheap, but if you have enough forward thinking to bring it, you set it off and you can extract. They work really well. I love it on streets. They added one on ground zero as well. And now there's a green flare extract on woods. And it's kind of like by kind of near ZB14 back a little bit up, okay. up towards um, the USEC camp. And then what we got is an underground bunker on woods in the new area by the sunken village where like the cultist spawns just like at the base of one of the mountains, it kind of like goes in now and there's just a bunker door that's open and you go down like two levels and there's like six or eight different rooms and there's a marked circle down there. And like mm. I feel you, people have been finding keys and stuff like that, um, which and then there's a big door. So I hope they connect because that's that's always what I wanted. There's the one up on Sniper Rock. Right. And it's like I want to be able to go down in there. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, so we got a little bit of woods touch up. Um, with the patch yesterday, and apparently we're going to be getting more of that, which is cool. Um, apparently he said quests from the BTR driver. Where like you would like while you're in there and he's driving you around, you could like ask him like an NPC in an RPG, like if he has anything for you to do, and he might say yes, and that might then net you some benefits. He didn't really go into it, but I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, they're working on, there's going to be new types of extractions <laughs> cope for, uh, calling in a helicopter <laughs> like the SBT mod. <laughs> That'd be so sick. God. Um, hideout customization. We don't know what that means, but you're going to be able to customize your hideout winter camo, uh, another new gun, which is another bolt action three, three, eight Lapua. It is called the. Seiko TRG M10 338 Lapua Mag bolt action. Cool beans. Moss guns. Um uh booby trapping bodies and booby trapping loot containers is coming. Oh god, so you put a zero zero fort armor and a raid backpack on just drop it on a scav. On a scav, yeah. And, and then, then tie a tripwire tripwire to it to a VOG 25 which only has a 1.5 second fuse time and proning on bodies to loot will be a thing of the past you know how that's like the default thing is you just go lay pro you're toast bro you're toast the new thing is going to be running through dead bodies back and forth <laughs> to see if you trip anything so it's tripped by your like physical character like walking by it that's not how like the it it doesn't trigger when you like hit F on them or whatever. No. The yeah. That's how it is right now. Now we don't, we don't, we have the trip wires and we can set up traps, but you can't booby trap a body. Like he said, specifically is coming, um, in the, uh, in the thing. Yeah. Dude, imagine getting stuck in the search animation. Like you're getting bugs out and you just die to an M67. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We're getting uninterrupted healing. 
Meaning if each part of your body is missing three HP, you just hold that Salua until it's all up. I don't have to hit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait till fucking 2027 when I'll get back to playing the game. It's going to be. It has a whole all, the, new all the things world. I want. Uh, what this, the, the vaguest thing of all time, more detailed post raid stats is what he said. The words out of his mouth. That's it though. What details? I don't know, but more detailed post raid stats. Cool. Uh, <laughs> that we do, are the stats trustworthy? <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying, bro. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we're getting them. Uh, reworking weapon mastery, which I think is great, like because it basically does nothing, and I think it'd be really cool if it did something. Uh, and then like miscellaneous, he was like, we're working on recoil and sound and loot. Ah, uh, dude, I don't even, bro. <sighs> okay. I do want you to watch this, actually. He was like, <laughs> he was like, uh, we are, yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, we're, we're reworking recoil. And everybody was like, I saw this on Twitter. Did you trending. see the video? Watch the no. video. I just sent it to you. It's it's just watch 15 seconds of it. And tell me updating mechanics for shooting wall ADS. Does that look better or worse? And shooting from the hip. God, even they say shooting from the hip, even though you're not shooting. Yeah, that's actually funny. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible <clears throat> yeah so here's the thing no not the yeah yep yes Again. yes yes the wave the, the yes. fucking the the boat yes the fucking dingy the motion of the storm. ocean yeah 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 yeah. like some of these so i have to say the animations of course they look they look like more realistic of course they do like the handling of yes. it but not the handling of yes. it, <laughs> like yes, like the way it, where it, how much it's moving and where is not realistic, but there's something about it that just looks more like yeah, it like, feels more like visceral and like um impactful, but it looks like it undoes the recoil in that like in almost all those clips, the first few shots seem to catch most of it again, and then like it levels out, which is where you get that like wave, like you said, and that yeah. feels like. Like this, this is a video that like, I feel like everybody watched and went like, it's too late for this shit. Like we, this would have been an adjustment on the old recoil, but we have new recoil. So what are you doing? And he immediately like got super mad. He was like, no, he's like, and then he kept saying, I, I need to send you the actual clip. He kept saying, no, 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 we didn't change recoil. We just added some, it's just like rotation. But he was like, we didn't change recoil. And then at one point he... But that is the reason. At one point, he literally said, fuck it. We won't even do it then. Now, what happened immediately after that, like in the middle of him freaking out about the fact that chat was universally eviscerating this, in the middle of his freak out, the lights turned off, sirens started blaring, guys with guns ran in, he put a gas mask on. They all left the studio and then it cut to a video. And the video. At first, I got like worried. <laughs> Dude, I would have led with that if that was like, like real. Um, well, like, I, I, I forgot. No, that I know. Like I know. A fucking performance. And I'm just thinking he lives in a fucking war torn country. You know, it's like. True. Um, Jesus. <laughs> but here's the thing. Then a video played. And the video was announcing the event. And we'll get to the event in a second. Okay, not not war torn. Sorry. Someone's going to fucking. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So. Then everybody immediately was like, wait, was that a troll? Was the whole recoil thing a troll to like set up the transition to like get him fake riled up? That would have been genius. So then I was like. I was team, oh I was team, that was actually probably a troll, except a few hours after, they posted that video to Twitter. And in my head, I was like, well, 
the joke is over, guys. Like, right? So now I'm kind of back to, like, team I think they actually want to do this? And... And of course, and of course, like, this very obvious, like, half of the community is not sure if it's real, half isn't. They... <laughs> Here's the thing. If it was a troll, the perfect response is to not say anything. Yes. If it's not a troll and they're serious and they're BSG, they're not going to say anything. Yes, you <laughs> so hit the no nail on the head. What? Yes. You know, what? You hit We're the nail on gonna... the head. We are genuinely never going to know because even if we don't get it, there's a chance it wasn't a troll and they just decided to scrap it because of how people hated it. Oh, so there's a third option. It wasn't a troll. Yeah, but they actually scrap it. That's the third option. Because here's the thing. And then they're gonna and then they're gonna rewrite history and say it was always a troll yeah. from the beginning. Because here's the thing, I won't put it past them because they've already done this. The recoil patch came out. I don't remember what I think it was the winter wipe like last year. Like a month after that, they did a patch where they updated the pistol recoil and they killed pistol recoil. They made it like so bad. And then the community freaked out and then they reverted it. So yeah. they already have a history of they're in the good recoil and then like attempting to make a quote unquote balance change to it, ruining it and then rolling it back. Yeah. See, it's like it almost see that's bad. That's a, yes, that's atrocious right dude. Um, but so like this, it almost feels like it, it, the gun gets pushed further back so there's a longer reset time when you send yeah, the auto, yeah, which is like the opposite of what, it, yes. like, that's fifty percent of why this recoil feels so good is because semi-auto is viable, and yeah, like that and, and, looks and like, ass in semi-auto. Yeah, like we can debate all day long whether or not any of this is realistic. Yeah, who cares? But I, but I'm not even gonna bother. I don't care. It's just bad for the yeah, game. Yeah, it just doesn't look fun. It doesn't look like it's fun like, here's to shoot. the thing. I would be like, honestly, if the point fire was like this and ADSing was like it is now. Yeah. I don't mind. I feel like that might be a W because point fire laser beams yeah. being the meta forever. That's what we've always needed is we've needed ADS. Yeah. Um, ADS semi-auto should be the most accurate. Yeah, 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 yeah. ADS full auto should be less accurate, but more accurate than, than point fire full auto. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's always been point fire full auto is like the easiest to control. Yeah. Point fire full auto got a bit of a nerf. I, th I don't know if it was this wipe or late last wipe, but yeah, it's, um, but yeah, dude, it's just like, it looks so weird. And then he just kept saying, we didn't change the point. We didn't change the recoil, guys. We didn't change it. And we were like, I don't know, dude. Like, You're it like, feels okay. like okay you with... changed it. I'm okay with that. I'm not. To be honest. I'm not, dude. Like, this right here, I don't know. It's it, it sh Shooting a shotgun, I oh, feel like yeah, should that's, be like No, that. sorry, sorry, sorry. That's a Saiga. I'm okay with that. That looked like yeah. an AK. Yeah. No, no, no. If yeah. that's a Saiga, a that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's a Saiga. That's Saiga. totally so, fine. Um, it, when you when you when Flechette is in the game and it exists, yeah, right? Yeah, I want yeah. I but, want it to kick you in the shoulder like a horse, which is how every yeah. shotgun fucking shoots. No, for sure. I'm for okay sure. with that. Um And that's an ash, right? Yeah. Yeah, that. Which also big gun, that's fine. I just of all the things, like, there's a million things you can do, right? What I hate yeah. is when the either the reticle inside the housing or the front sight and the rear sight yeah. are completely out of line. Yeah. Yes. It's the worst. Yes. Yes. I'd be fine if they were in line and the gun bounced around all over the place yeah. or if they were in line and the camera had shook. That yeah. would be less bad than when you shoot and the rear sight goes down six inches and the front sight goes up six inches and it takes a calendar month for them to align yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's just like, ooh, the camera recoil seems crazy. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's just, it's like, they're in such a good spot. Dude, I quite, 
No one. You want to know what's crazy? I haven't heard in my chat or on Twitter or in the comment of any YouTube video since January when they added 0.14's recoil or whatever. I have not heard either side. I have not heard one gun be like, this is the like, everyone's like, it's so lame he's using that. It's just a laser beam. He's just relying on the laser beam. And I haven't had anybody be like, dude, the recoil is so hard to handle. Like, it's so lame. This is the most happy the most people have ever been with the recoil. Nobody's talking about it. There are so many guns that are viable. Certain guns feel great. Like, yes, people talk about how they ruined the like 308 MDR, but the scar feels great. So it's like, it's almost a trade. Holy cow. Like just the, the like when we haven't, here's, here's where, okay, I'm, I'm Usad. This is the last thing I'll say about it. When we, it's been two years since there has been a single occlusion zone in the Shoreline Resort for vertical audio. Why are we putting devs on the 11th recoil rework? 100% of players that need to go to Shoreline need vertical audio. None of the players are complaining about the recoil. Like, I just don't understand. This is one of those things where I'm like, Please, God. But I digress. We move on. After that kerfuffle, uh, it was pretty cool. They launched right into like a super high production value raid, like raid series style video where like these dudes are clearing some terror group lab. Freaking. How's the recoil look like when they're clearing <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, all right, guys, fucking, uh, uh, fucking beta team, go, go in. Exactly, exactly. Um, so they're clearing this like terror group lab thing, and like somebody's narrating, or like on a call or whatever. And basically, it's the more we watch, the more we're like, oh, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Terror group, chemical, experiment gone wrong, build crescendoing music, open oh. the door, hear the zombie sound, fade to black, and they end the stream. They don't raid anybody. There's no nothing. Literally, it's like the video goes, boom, ends on this big crescendo, fade to black, and then immediately you see the purple, not like this screen, like they unplug the ethernet, where Twitch is like, I don't know where the broadcast went. Dunk, they cut it. And then the patch came up. And so everybody was like, oh, shit. And so we launched the patch. And uh, sure enough, when you go to the map selection, Labs has the like, uh, all the like Blood half splatter. circle. It's not the radioactive symbol, but it's the like infected symbol in every movie. Yeah. Yeah. With all the half circles or whatever. And it says 50%. And when you click on it, when you click on labs down at the bottom wire where the time is, it says infection level 50% biohazard. Yeah. And all the other maps say infection level 0%. And so we go into labs, dude, zombies, zombies running everywhere. Zombies in like doctor outfits, zombie usex, zombie bears. Are they the, are they the fucking lab, uh, yeah. dudes from the elevator shaft? No. Oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, like, maybe. There weren't I any... Used to say, I used to say goodbye to them every... Yeah. Uh, I'd be like, yo, I'll see you guys later when I was taking the elevator yep. out of the fucking basement. There aren't any, like, hazmat dudes, which I think would be sick, but there's a bunch of... So zombies everywhere. They swarm you. They hoard. Like, once they hear shots and they aggro you, they go crazy. Um, Is it like... Do they just like... They, all, like they this, run at you. Typical yes, zombie. They are like limping like that. And then they see you and they and they like run at you. Oh um God. okay, so I'm I'm a conflicted man with this event. That was undoubtedly one of the greatest, like just I don't care about realism, Mil Milsim, fun. Like it was like last year with the snow, right? Where like nobody knew the snow was coming and it was just like, wow, like same thing with the airdrops. Nobody knew that was coming and that happened in raid. It was so cool 
to like hop into labs and there just be zombies everywhere. You're like, oh shoot. They also conveniently added a bunch of like, uh, you know, the big giant, like ones that people wheel around like oxygen, oxygen tanks or helium tanks, the thin ones. They added a bunch of those and they're orange. And if you shoot them, they blow up and they'll like chain reaction blow up and they can kill zombies and stuff like that. Um, and then there's I a, bet you they're going to keep that in the game. Yeah, that probably. And then there's a new door that opened by where blue key card is. It's been a while since you played labs, but where blue key card is first floor right by the corner stairs. There's a double door that's open now that was always shut. Is blue key card, the one where you walk in and it's just like a kind of a corridor. And on the right are like the locked rooms with like the glass with uh, like a there's like a porthole. Yes, like yes, a, yes, yes. It's the medical one. There's a porthole through that you can open on both sides. Yeah. And then yeah, there's yeah. all the little glass rooms. So that's blue. And then right by there, by the metal stairs where you would go up or down to the basement, there's a double door that's open. And in there, you go in and then you have to hit the power and then a door opens up and you go in and there's like all this like orange hazmat stuff. There's like a whole glass room that's sealed off and gas is all in it. And then on the left, there's like a bunch of medical desks and it's like, it's like black key card on steroids. There's stims everywhere. I found this new two use labs. It's just abdominal. Key card. Abdominal abdominal yeah. There's like dead people on the ground. And uh, there was like a room. Where I found like an R SAS and a bunch of ammo and I found a bunch of stims and I was like, oh, this is so sick. So uh, it's dope. And that was undoubtedly a sick moment. And then I woke up today and basically what happened was I we don't know what's triggering it or if it's just on rails, but the other maps started showing 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent infected. And now today, every map in the game is infected. And there is a ceasefire in Tarkov where if you go into a raid, if the scavs, if you don't aggro the scavs, if there are scavs, they won't aggro you. There's like a ceasefire. Everyone understands we need to kill the zombies. So the zombies will fight scavs and scavs will fight the zombies. So when you spawn into a raid, you spawn into shots being fired everywhere. Because the zombies are attacking scavs and the scavs are fighting back and you can like roll up to a scav and he won't shoot you and you shoot the zombies and the scavs shooting the zombie and you're like, oh shit, this is kind of crazy. And they're on every map now and it's like, I think once the infection level gets to 100%, there are no scavs anymore. It's just zombies. So like labs is 100% infected. Uh, streets was like 80% infected. It has some like crazy cool moments yeah that sounds neat man however oh yeah it also five raids in you're like okay i see how this is gonna go your first couple raids man you were like nothing's ever been cooler this is the sickest shit ever five ten raids in you're like okay i get it all right so when they hit you, if it causes a bleed, you get infected. Now, actually, I'll give them I'll give them props for this. The infection is great. It doesn't like the cultist knife or no kind of. It's a different infection. It doesn't kill you, and it doesn't even seep away at your HP. But it nukes your hydration, so you basically go down to zero hydration, and you can drink, and it's just going to nuke it again. So it does take away your HP. And well, I guess slowly. Indirectly. Also, also, I'm at max metabolism, so I kind of forgot that dehydration does take away your HP. Uh, Anyways, and then your vision gets like tunnel vision a little bit. And you get this like really red like stuff, red blue stuff on the edge. And it also messes with the audio, which is kind of annoying. But nothing can fix it in raid. No antidote, no nothing. But as soon as you exit, you're cured. So it's not like you have to go on a, you know, rigmarole Jaeger quest to go get the cure. Oh. And you also don't have to pay money for the cure. You just have to get out of the raid. And as long as you, you know, maybe have a bottle of water or whatever, you can get out of the raid. So in that sense, it's way less toxic than I thought it was going to be. And you can prevent getting infected if you have a Zagustin or a Blue Blood or an AHF1 going because those stims prevent bleeds from forming for a certain amount of time. Right. So if you see a bunch of zombies and you hit a Zagustin and they hit you, they can't get a bleed. And if you don't bleed, you can't get infected. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of sick. Jesus Christ, dude. It's the fucking here's where, 80 simulator. Here's where some of the problems lie. A, 
Uh, some of them have guns. Some of the zombies have guns. And the zombies are very accurate with those guns. Well, of course they are. They can't walk or speak. They literally... I never has never ever in fucking zombie lore and I hate all zombie stuff so someone's gonna be like well actually yeah. in the third comic book yeah. they never have guns right yeah they, they I don't think so so some of them have guns they'll have pistols or they'll have uh, yeah just pistols some of them have melee weapons they'll have like taigas and stuff but they'll have guns they're they what they literally do is they go like this they swing their arm like this and shoot. And they always hit you. I have a, I have footage of me dying to a zombie. He had swung his arm. He hadn't shot. His He was walking at me like this. And from his chest cavity, a muzzle flash, he shot me and I died. He had throated me. Like his arms were yeah, down. That's a, that's a crazy infection. It was dude. a crazy infection. So, they have guns, and that's mad annoying. Secondly, I don't know. I haven't data mined how much X, how much HP they have. Mm. Where do you shoot a zombie to kill it? Based on the movies. It's head, right? Yes. These motherfuckers will tank three M80s to the head. Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> Which does not feel fun. <laughs> when you have 48 of them chasing you, right? So, and then, and then this one will really get you going, which is it really shows the, uh, it really pulls the curtains off of the netcode. There's four bajillion entities. They, everything is lagging. Every PvP fight today was lagging. Every time I played with a partner, it they're lagging all over the place. Every zombie, the zombies do a little like strafe when they run at you to make them more avoidable. And they're all lagging. So it's just like, it's like you can't hit them when they're it's like that scene from that one movie, the horror movie with the girl in the hallway where she's like, Yes. Like teleport. It's basically. that, but there's a 40 of them. So there are yeah. so many zombies. <laughs> there are, their HP pool is too high. The net code cannot handle all of these entities like dying and nobody's bodies disappearing. At, like my frames on most taps dropped by, most maps dropped by like 40 to 60. I was on reserve today, not streets. I was on reserve today. And a bunch of zombies spawned in and were attacking me. And I was at 30 FPS, not scoped in. Hell yeah. On a 4090 and a 13900K above ground. And it's just like crazy. And so it, once again, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. There were parts of this where I was like, this is so sick. Like, this is so sick. Their animations, the ragdolls, the sound design, the noises they make. All the like distant zombie things you hear. <coughs> but after a few raids, what practically happens is it's impossible to accomplish anything, whether you're trying to quest or PvP, because once you shoot one, they all hear you and they swarm you and they never stop swarming you. You can never clear the area. There are always more, and at some point, you either have to heal or reload, and that's when you're dead. Because, like, at one point, I was playing with no no generals today. I think I had eight of them shooting guns at me, in addition to the six that were chasing me. And so, everyone, like, you... And they each take five headshots yes, to Yes, they kill. each take... Five M80s. So it's like you can't stop and shoot the one shooting at you because if you stop, the horde that's following you eats you. But you have so many shooting at you that you can't get away from it. And so it's like, and they're they're so tanky that you can't just like turn around and mow them all down. And so like it gets to the point where like if you want a PvP fight, 
you can't because like you just have you have to just like bum rush your opponent because you're just actively getting chased by zombies while you're trying to get in this PvP fight. If you're trying to maybe they want you to do like what you do with the scabs, man, and just party up. Party up, dude. No no PvP, dog. You can't do a quest. Like if you're trying to like plant something, you're toast. You're like you're never gonna be able to like sit for 30 seconds and plant an item because you the the meta is to just abuse the fact that they oh they'll also open doors and phase through doors so if you close the door they'll just open it or just phase through it so the only thing you can really do is That's the net code yeah the only thing you can really do is go into a locked room because it's something the AI is this way as well scavs uh, a room that was locked is always locked to them so like if you like you just can't they'll run up to the door but they'll never come inside a room that was once locked so if you have a bunch of keys you can like get to like a locked room and that is kind of a reprieve for a little bit. But it just became like the, and a couple of the quests are like kill 20 zombies with the AA 12 shotgun. One of them was just like kill 50 zombies. It's, it's kind of fun doing those quests because they're everywhere. But then after five raids, you're like, okay, well, what am I doing in Tarkov? Right there? Oh, you can't loot the zombies. So you can't get anything from them. You can't get their guns. You can't get their ammo. You can't get their melee weapons. You can't get meds off of them. So there's no reason to so the farm them. Risk reward when the reward is zero yeah. and the risk is infinite. Yeah. So there's no reason to farm them. I killed 50 in one raid and got 2000 XP. I they either Hell yeah, they dog. either don't give XP or they give like a tenth of what a scav gives. So you can't PVP. You can't quest. There's no reason to farm the zombies. They're on every map. You can't kill them unless you bring flesh ammo. Like you need something like 90 or 100 HP like uh, damage to like one tap them. But then you get into a PvP fight and the guy's got armor and you're toast because you brought Warmageddon and it's got three pen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So then you try and bring a sidearm and you die in the gun switch animation because that animation is too long. And then introduced with this patch is once again, unfortunate timing, but currently in Tarkov, all quests... In the entire game, when you turn them in, don't give you XP. So it really quickly went from like, holy shit, this is sick, to like everybody being like, hey, do you know when the event's over? Because nobody can do anything and there's nothing to do. So I'm glad that I took you on that journey because I felt like I had you. I felt like for a minute you were like, yo, this event sounds sick. And now I'm watching, and that's that's how we all felt. We were like, dude, this is the sickest thing. Like, what a cool surprise. And then by the end of today, I was like, oh man, like, okay. So if, you know, if it were me, I think with these two changes, the whole event would be fixed. One, the head HP of every zombie should be one. Any gun, any bullet. It's like the most classic zombie thing. Shoot them in the head. Even if their thorax HP is like 300, every zombie's head HP should be one. Yeah, they should have like fucking a thousand chest HP. Like they should tank everything because they... They're dead. It's They're like robots. Yeah. And the brain is the battery. Yeah. Right? They don't feel pain. Yep. You need to unplug the battery. Yeah. Their head HP should be one and none of them should have guns. That would completely flip this event on its head because you could wipe out a whole horde, give yourself enough time to heal, um, and you can use the very classic zombie thing, which is like put distance. And then that's like, that's what's cool about zombies in a game is like once you put distance, you're safe. Even if there's a horde chasing you, if you get way ahead of it, you can like heal or something. But right now, yeah. if you get way ahead of it, what happens when you get shot in Tarkov? It, like, cancels everything. Or you you lose stamina. When you get shot, no matter, even if it's a 9 mil round PST and I've got class 6 armor, it kills my stamina. So earlier today, I was playing with no generals. A group of them spawned behind me. I was running. They were shooting at me, so I lost my stamina. I turned around. They all attacked me. I mowed them down. I had a heavy bleed on my head and 2 HP on my head. So I pulled out a Zagustin. In the Zagustin animation, another one rounded the corner and smacked me in the head and I died. Like, 
there's no there's no time for even the shortest animation like a like a stim because yeah. they're just like they're overwhelming so no guns maybe they shouldn't open doors and one hp to the head and th like the whole thing is turned upside down pvp would be like thriving like people would be loving it you would be able to like clear a room or whatever and then do a quest plant your quest item like it and like newbies could have like target dummies that like yeah like the power fantasy of just like mowing down some zombies like we play zombie games because we want to kill zombies not die to them you know what i mean like yeah and like teaching just teaching new players like the importance of like take your time yeah hit the headshot slow down and take your shots yeah. you know like that's the other thing too is no one can afford all the ammos on the flea market quadrupled in price <clears throat> and nobody can afford to bring enough ammo like i mean you need I did a labs raid where I brought an M60, the new M60, which is the uh, LMG that shoots 308, so like M80. I brought six 100-round drum mags full of Ultra Nosler, and I left out of ammo. I left the raid out of ammo. You just like can't bring 600 rounds every raid. Nobody can afford that. And then all of that plus the regular Tarkov stuff. I was like getting frustrated with Shoreline. So I was like, let's go interchange. I grabbed a gun that had PVP ammo in it. I had a, uh, like a five, seven or like a backup gun that had high flesh ammo. That was going to be my zombie killing thing. I had my armor. I had my whole race set up. I brought food and water. I spawned in interchange seven seconds later. I got headshot by a PMC. I just didn't check the left spawn because I play in the morning and servers aren't normally full. And so it's like, that feels worse when you're like, so it just, I, I really want to give them props. There's so much about the event that they nailed. The people that normally nail it, nail it every time. Sound design yeah. nails it every time. Art nails it every time, right? Like those guys crush it. It's just like. Gameplay? <laughs> it ex Yeah. It exposes the spaghetti factor of the netcode and makes everyone lose frames. Every PVP fight is uber laggy. And they just didn't consider, like, it was like they forgot how tedious their healing system is when they designed them. Like, there's no yeah. room. You can't, the only way to gain HP when there are zombies around you is to hit an ETG. You don't have, there's nothing, you don't have time for anything else. You don't have time to heal. You don't have time to uh, CMS. You don't have time to pop a heavy bleed. It's like, you just have to pop an ETG. So they're 400K, meaning if you're newer to the game, you're toast. So yeah. really close, as always, to a phenomenal event. Three super small changes away from a phenomenal event. At the end of the day, I got some really cool moments out of it. Me and Swamp Fox did a raid where we killed 100 zombies between the two of us on labs. We got his quest item. We got PvP. We were like pulling guns off of players we killed for ammo. It was like a movie raid. But it really quickly just like you know you really quickly saw where the problems were going to be and those problems definitely grew and it's on every single map in the game right now so it's like okay <laughs> so that's the event that's the the emotional roller coaster that is the uh the Tarkov event but it's it's unfortunate it's classic it's unsurprising but it makes me sad cuz they're always this close. This, this, this always. Yeah. You know what? Always. I feel like I feel like they should test their events on the ETS. Like I I could be out of pocket here, but I feel like they really don't get a whole lot of value out of what do they test on the ETS. They should test the events. They never will because I feel like they live <laughs> for those surprise moments. And as soon as it's on the ETS, right, it would be leaked. But like it's just so every time they release an event, it's so clear that not enough people played it because yeah. the most common thing in my chat, this isn't a Jesse Kazam original idea. The most common thing in my chat where they shouldn't have guns and I should be able to head tap them like 90% of the community came to that conclusion in an hour. Well, who, but who plays on ETS? Enough people, not a lot, but enough people. Like the people who play on ETS are the people who opt into like customer service surveys. Yeah. It's not a fucking 
fair sample of normal but humans. Even that would be a, it's a more bunch of fail um, actually Karen gamers. It would be more fair sample than the seven people at BSG that played a raid and went, yeah, this event's cool. Let's ship it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm. I'm I know. Only half kidding. I know. So, <sighs> so close. But that's all the Tarkov stuff. What else is going on in your life? Dude, I'm I'm so excited for voting to be over, so I stop getting text messages every yeah, 14 and seconds. Phone calls. It's crazy. Holy mother of God, it's bro! Crazy. That we should be able to like prosecute to the full extent of the law. It it genuinely dog. Ninety five percent of the phone calls I get are drunk. Ninety five percent of the text messages I get are drunk. Ninety five percent of the emails I get are drunk. Ninety eight percent of all of those things are. Uh, actual snail mail paper mail junk it's it it's negatively affecting the normal parts of my life because i don't check i just don't they literally shut yeah. off my mail like two years ago because i just stopped collecting it really they the fucking postmaster got angry and was like sorry i can't fit shit in your mailbox anymore really like the one outside yeah. your house yeah yeah, dude, because it's all junk. Damn. It's like, dude, in three days, it's just a bunch of fucking local newspapers I never signed up for. Yeah. Pamphlets for bullshit. And yeah. then 9,000 fucking insurance documents that says this is not a bill, even though I signed up for paperless. Yeah. And checked it a million times. It's just never anything good until it's the one IRS document yeah. that I find six months later. Yeah, and they're right? like, like, you have an outstanding balance of $30,000. Yeah. And you're like, no! It, it's just fucking... Yeah. It, it's a fucking blighted wasteland, dog. And I want, like, some company needs to implement some kind of, like, do not call list for everything. Yeah. That you can opt in for, and it's like it's a fucking felony, yeah. If you don't listen, dude, like a this global is, list. This is the like we kicked the can down the road with the whole like you know a few years ago everyone's like oh everyone's already got my data what I'll accept all the cookies or whatever and it's like we've hit this critical mass where like everyone does have everyone's data and everyone's using it to send me shit I don't want. Yeah. Literally right now, I am getting a phone call. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like my iPhone, every call is like potential spam. It just says potential spam. Yeah. It, it, even when it's like my contractor who's going to build my house, like it's, it just, <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, like yeah. no matter what, it just says potential spam. I, I just, yeah. I feel so disconnected. I, I already feel disconnected from the like world enough being just like a streamer yeah gamer basement dwelling you know like whatever this just disconnects me from the real world like mm -hmm. before at least i could ignore my email right but my texts were from my family and friends and my phone calls were from my family and friends yeah it was like once every six months i'd get like a robo call but now it's 98 percent of the calls i get yep. are just trash dude yep yeah, it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. It dude. is crazy. Or and it used to be scams. I'd rather get the scams. At least those are entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could have a little fun with those if you wanted to. Oh god, but yeah, everybody we're not obviously going to get political, but if you live in the United States, go fucking vote. Yes. Please. Go vote. Yep. Hundo it P. matters. Hundo P. Well, yeah, I don't know, man. It's a, uh, it's a mess. I get like four hundred calls or texts a day. It's atrocious. Um. Oh, the only other thing we mentioned this on the PP a little bit, or we were gonna talk about it, but the the pay to win, the pay to hear Call of Duty oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I I haven't looked into that. Yeah. Other than someone was like, "There's a, a like." enhanced you know headphone yeah. audio mode or whatever that is yeah. you know, like you have to purchase with real money yeah so somebody sent me an article i skimmed through it on stream as i understand it it's like their hrtf mode 
custom tuned to like Call of Duty's maps and audios. Um is uh is twenty dollars for five years. Twenty dollars. Yeah. What a fucking scam, dude. Now the next the next the COD seventeen, Black Ops nine, right? Is yeah. gonna it's gonna be black and white, ten dollars DLC if you want color. Yep. Um R, G, and B are all separate purchases. You can bundle them though for a discount. Yeah. If you got fucking colorblind mode. Subscription that... based Amos's totally <laughs> Yeah, so, like, and what's crazy, too, is that, like, I don't follow a lot of Call of Duty YouTubers, but there are a few guys that have a really cool head on their shoulders that I watched back when, like, DMZ was coming out and I was, like, getting into Call of Duty. All of them that bought it said that they bought it and then turned it off. They were like, I don't like it. The other one, the, just, like, the default audio is better. Talking so, about the new Black Ops? No, the, the audio. Like, in the new Black Ops, they got yeah, the yeah, audio. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. They, and they were like, I don't like it. The default audio is better. So Hell yeah, dude. Purchase a personalized profile. Customers to their unique physiology and it's available. So, okay. They have the option. The players have the option to purchase a personalized profile for $20 that's customized to the player's unique physiology. You know what that means? When you when you go to like Unity, remember when I did the fucking Steam audio thing? There's just a drop down where you can just like drop in a, any number of HRTF profiles. Because mm. HRTF, it's literally just math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just math that changes the frequencies of left and right, yeah. subtly, whatever. But it's based, when they do the math, it's physics-based, which is based on, like, your ears are this far apart. Your head yeah. is this large. Your yeah. torso is this dense, you know, like, yeah. so. But they probably have, like, fucking five yeah. presets yeah. in a drop-down menu or whatever. Dude, that's so fucking whack. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's so bullshit. What a... And just like, out of a game that already has a tremendous amount of microtransactions and requires a $70 purchase every year, like they release a Call of Duty every year. It's always full price. They do seasons, microtransactions, currency, all that kind of stuff. So it's just like, it's like you would, on one hand, you would expect it from them, but on the other hand, it's like, this isn't like some super niche indie game that's like, I worked really hard on this like other audio profile, you know, it took me a long time, so I'm going to charge a little bit for it. It's like competitive. It's just everything together is just, it's just such a weird scenario. These are how these games that have nine gajillion dollar budgets make up for the fact that they make dog shit copy yeah. pasta wear dude we were i mean we were talking uh, about this on the podcast or on the patreon by the way a little subtle the plug for the patreon but we were talking about that where i was like just like to some extent and obviously not all there have been some phenomenal triple a games but to some extent get companies like them it's like the uh the avengers effect the marvel effect on cinema where like the movie making a billion dollars can be considered a failure because it costs us 900 million to make. We invested in this because it's supposed to make 2 billion. Whereas 20 years ago, making a billion dollars on a movie was like the most unthinkable thing of all time. So it's like, it scales so fast where it, it feels like that with call of duties, where it's like making $780 million on call of duty this year is an abject failure because we spent 750 million on it. So we have to sell the, it's like, stop spending 750 million copy pasting the same game every year and then your profits might be better it, it's so it's just like the cost of the games are scaling with what they're making and so it's just these insane numbers aren't enough so they have to get the micro transactions and they have to get the pay to audit, pay to here and it's just so weird so yeah uh, I do this fucking so whack holy yep. shit so that's a fascinating little gaming story. Obviously, there could be more than meets the eye, something we're not seeing there, but it feels weird. Feels weird, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that is uh that is the stuff. That's what's going on. Lot 
feast or famine in Tarkov, we had between a new event, a Tarkov TV Live, and a Tarkov patch all in one day. That was a whole lot. Um, so crazy stuff, but yeah, we're vibing. We're having a good time. Cool to hear that Factorio is a uh, gotcha by the cojones and you're having a good time with it. So um, yeah. Uh, if you, if we appreciate you being here, if you want more content like this, you can go to patreon.com slash the podcast pod, where you can get early ad free access to these episodes and up to one additional episode every week. Uh, pretty cool stuff over there. And, uh, thank you once again to Mando for sponsoring this episode. You guys are the best and we will definitely see y'all on the next one. Peace.